Hello, welcome to St. Mary's College for our Effervescence Cultural Night Showcase. <laughs> my name is Kayla Harris. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a sophomore and I'm one of the co-chairs of our culture events, cultural events coordinators team. Efflorescence means to develop or unfold as if in flowering or to super bloom. It is also a period of growth or development ending in fullness or manifestation. Hello everyone, my name is Erin Dalton. I use they, she pronouns and I am a fourth year. I am also the event planner and publicist for tonight. Woohoo! <laughs> We chose the theme of efflorescence to represent the variety of identities that are on this campus and how when we all bloom together, a beautiful garden is created. Hello everyone, my name is Aisha Tavaluru, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm a fourth year. So I'm one of the set directors for efflorescence as well. Um, the purpose of our cultural night showcase is to highlight the intersectionality within each and every one of us. And a wide range of identities will be covered tonight in many different ways. Hello everyone, my name is Addison Maxada. I use any pronouns and I'm a third year here. I'm also the, yeah. <laughs> I'm also the other co-chair of our efflorescence team. Woo. Woo. Along with representation of diverse cultures, the showcase rejoices the unity of our similarities while also showcasing our differences. Hello, my name is Kayla Ko. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a fourth year. I am the other set director of our cultural events coordinator team. Before we begin, we do want to give a trigger warning. Some of these sets will use strong language and derogatory terms and mention racism, homophobia, transphobia, and sexism. Please be advised, and if you need to step out at any time, please do so. We also acknowledge the Saklan Bay Milwaukee tribe who were the first people of the land where St. Mary's College is today. We also acknowledge the greater San Francisco Bay Area as the land of the Ohlone people and all of the native people recognized and not recognized, enrolled and disenrolled. Finally, we want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. Our participants and our team have put in so much time and effort. We appreciate everyone's support. Thank you and enjoy the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Hernandez, pronouns she, her, hers, and I am co-president of Ballet Folklorico Guadalupano. Our mission is to preserve and showcase the splendor of Mexico's traditional dance, music, dress, and history. To cultivate and promote public awareness of this rich cultural heritage at SMC. Our first set represents the state of Yucatan in Mexico, which blends European rhythms with Mayan traditions. The dancers in this set are Tatiana, Ashley, Yolanda, Salvador, Silali, Cristina, Michaela, Ariana, Andrew, Victoria, Rebecca, Javier, Patricia, Julio, Julia, Olivia, and Angela.
Hi, I'm Molly Flober. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm a first year at St. Mary's representing neurodiverse voices on campus. So I'm going to be reading an original poem called The Box, and this was written as a response to the phrase that most neurodiverse people will hear in their lifetime. Why can't you just act normal? Neurodiverse identities are often rejected in favor of the idealized and non-existent normal. Please recognize that when you tell someone to be normal, you are asking that they stop being themselves. Let's fight to end normal at SMC and in our lives. <laughs> Since I was born, society has craved to place me into a box of their own creation, it that looms inside the brain, dark and unforgiving, a place where your bones snap and your soul crumbles until you become what they want you to be, as flimsy as paper with your arms pinned down and your mouth sewn shut. This is normal. This is the box. This is where you rot in the mold that defies your maker. And as the taunts, the sneers, the fists make you retreat inside, the lid closes down, down, down. You were never getting out of this alive. But what if instead you were to claw the walls they built around you into fierce and bloody shreds? You tear that box. Watch it burn. You take your arms that fly like birds and soar up, up, up from that oppressive darkness to be as you were always intended to be. To boldly refuse to meet the eyes of the one who calls himself normal. My name is Nicole Sutton. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a fourth year senior and the set that I created today is the stepping set. It's an expression of percussion dance in African-American culture where the entire body is used to produce complex rhythms and sound. I chose this piece because I wanted to explore other aspects of my African-American culture and show the community the rhythmic and powerful expression of stepping.
my name is Ria Dharmadikari, my pronouns are she, her, and tonight I will be representing South Asian culture by singing a song from the Bollywood movie Lutera. Indian culture features an immense diversity of languages and subsequently different types of music in different languages. Sawadalu is a Hindi song about the experience of feeling love all around you in nature and learning to embrace it. <laughs> My name is Addison Maxada, I use any pronouns, and I will be showcasing my queer identity by reciting a spoken word poem describing who I was, who I am, and who I hope to be. It is my journey of acknowledging and loving every aspect of myself, especially aspects that I have struggled to accept. I do not know who I am anymore. Sometimes I do not recognize myself in the mirror. 
My name does not feel like my own. When I speak, it sounds as though someone else is speaking. Some days I feel as though I am simply going through the motions, stuck in a dream that my mind refuses to wake from. Many people are lucky enough to go throughout their lives not questioning who they are. Unfortunately, I am not one of them. And because of this, there have been multiple times over the past year where I've had to confront one of life's harshest truths. Others' love is conditional. That is not an easy thing to, for me to accept. I have spent the past 21 years living to appease others. But I've recently discovered one of life's greatest gifts. My self-love is unconditional. No longer will I try to live up to others' expectations for me. I will love who I love, I will change my body as I please, and I will do things that make me happy with the single life that I have. And I will no longer care about your disappointment. Why? Because my heart is still beating, despite the many nights that I considered stopping it. Because I can look in the mirror and tell myself that I am proud of who I have become. Because I deserve to be happy. Because finally, after 21 years, I love myself. I do not know who I am anymore, and that is okay. My name is Amaya Simone Walters. I use she, her, her pronouns, and I am the vice president of NASA. Hi, my name is Isabella Hoffman. Um, I go by she, her, hers. I am a psychology major with pre-med intent, and I am the publicity manager for NASA. Hello, St. Mary's. My name is Zachary Zapata. I'm a third year bio major uh, working towards pre-med here. I am from Lake Forest Park, Washington. I was born and raised in Roseville, California. Uh, I'm from Walnut Creek, California. Originally, I went to Del Sol High School, and now I was pretty close and local. I am Athabascan and Yupik. I am from the Corrupt Tribe um, up past Redding, California from Happy Camp, and I also carry the Taino people of Puerto Rico with me. I'm actually about a quarter Incan, which is indigenous American of Latin America, Peru and Ecuador. That's where they're mostly known for. Uh, they lasted about a century in the 13th century. Spanish came over and eventually took him out along with a bunch of other <laughs> tribes and other um, cultures down there. I'm not sure how I define being Native American, but one aspect of my Native American identity that I feel is most prevalent is my connection to and care for all beings. I feel that I have a heightened respect for all of nature and what it provides for us, as well as a heightened respect for all people who I come into contact with each day. And I feel that this connection stems from a core Native American value of being in tune with mother nature. I define being indigenous or Native American as being part of a culture or a people that is keeping traditions alive and just respecting earth and everything that life has to give and not taking anything for granted. I have not had a large experience as a Native American student at St. Mary's. While I am part of the executive team for NASA and we hold a few events each semester, I do not feel that my Native American identity carries over into any other parts of my St. Mary's experience. There is an extremely small Native American population on campus and I can honestly say I don't feel our presence here. As an Indigenous student at St. Mary's, I wasn't really here for the first two years due to COVID, so I didn't really get to like experience St. Mary's until about my junior year. Um, my junior year, I got connected with NASA um, from the former president, and it was really missing emerging Indigenous Peoples Day that I really was like, this is something I really care about, and I actually made it my junior art project.
Being Native American intersects with my identity as an elite athlete and as a STEM major. I'm one of the few in my Native American community that plays a D1 sport and is pursuing a career in STEM. In this regard, I feel that I am setting an example for younger Native American girls, which inspires me to excel at what I'm doing and work hard to pave a long path for the next seven generations. Both of my identities actually intersect being Native American and Puerto Rican because there's a Native community on Puerto Rico, but it's just making sure that they're both prioritized equally in my life. And it's really important to make sure that both of them are represented at all times. And if that's wearing something or talking a certain way or just respecting the community I've come from when people don't understand it, so also educating. But something major that's impacted my life is the reason I'm going into medicine is because of the way those two communities intersect. I am the great, great granddaughter, I think by four greats or something, of the shaman of the Kuruk tribe. And so medicine's really important. And then in Puerto Rico, not having access to good health care is a really big problem. So being able to mesh those two identities for my future is something that I think is really important. People always think I'm really tan in the winter, but I'm not just tan, I'm native. Something I wish that people knew about being native is it's not like what you see in the movies. I don't know many good movies that actually tell the story of a true Native American, like Pocahontas. It's a cute Disney movie, but it's not the real full story. And not many people tell our full stories. And so I want people to know that we don't live in huts and teepees and things. Like we still have them on our property and sometimes we'll use them for traditional ceremonies, but we live just like every other person. And the only thing that we do that might be a little different is we have a deeper connection, I would say, to the environment and to just nature in general and understanding that what we take from Earth, we have to be able to give back. My culture is a lot about giving and there being an equal partnership. So I want people to know that you can live in an equal partnership with everything. Funny one actually here is that most people think potatoes come from Ireland. They don't. They actually come from Peru and the Incans were the ones that farmed most of them. And that's why there's so many different species of potatoes now. It's because the Incans did that. They also did that with corn and a bunch of other foods. They were actually mostly vegetarian because it was hard to get a lot of animals up in the Andes. But because of that, they actually domesticated slash ate alpacas, llamas, or guinea pigs. So they mostly ate a lot of vegetables because like a lot of potatoes and other stuff. Get yourself to know as many cultures as possible. You know, in my opinion, one thing that gets me is a lot of people are always like, oh, your culture, like I need to completely follow your culture, but it's not because like I said, I'm, I'm both Incan, so South American, but I'm also a little European. So it's like I identify as both of them. So it's like, I don't, feel bad for any of them, I'm kind of, it just identifies me. So it's who I am. So thank you guys. Something I'd like to say to anyone, like not just St. Mary's, but just anybody in general is like, think about if every time you're going through something hard, where you came from. For you to physically be where you are right now, every person before you had to be successful. Every one of your ancestors was successful in some way to get you here. And because of that, that makes you a fighter. And whatever you're going through, don't worry about it because you've gotten through things before. And every culture there's ever been, everything that you pull from in your life, there has been warriors. So you are a warrior in and that of yourself. Don't let whatever is going on right now take you down because you come from a long line of fighters. And with that, it makes you a legion.
everyone, my name is Aishita, my pronouns are she, her, hers. The dance I'll be performing is Kuchipudi, an Indian classical dance form originating from the Telugu state called Andhra Pradesh. Having learned Kuchipudi since second grade, I feel that it is a significant aspect of my identity growing up, as it is for many other Indian women. Tonight, I am dancing to Brindavani Dillana. <laughs> My name is Amana Williams. I'm a sophomore and I'm double majoring in politics and ethnic studies. I am representing my black culture. I will be playing What a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong and I'm dedicating this to my great grandfather who was a jazz composer.
My name is Remy and my pronouns are she, her, hers. I will be playing Love Story by Taylor Swift on guitar while Rhea sings. I wanted to play this song because this song always reminds me that anyone can have a love story. We were both young when I first saw you I closed my eyes and the flashback starts I'm standing there On a balcony in summer air See the lights, see the party, the ball gowns See you make your way through the crowd and say hello. Little did I know that you were Romeo, you were throwing pebbles, and my daddy said, stay away from Juliet. And I was crying on the staircase, begging you, please don't go. And I said, Romeo, take me somewhere we can be alone. I'll be waiting. All that's left to do is run. You'll be the prince and I'll be the princess. It's a love story, baby, just say yes. Hi, my name is Miriam Samara, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm set director for the Deb Get by the Mina Cultural Club. Our dance members include Charbel, Abu Bachera, Sarah Elhizajan, Anne Marie Nasser, Cindy Rantisi, and myself, Miriam Samara. Our Deb Get is a traditional folk dance that originated in the Levantine region of the Middle East, which includes Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, Jordan, and Iraq. It is typically performed in groups at weddings, celebrations, and other social gatherings. Dancers form a circle or a line, holding hands and stomping their feet in rhythm to the music, while also incorporating various beads, clapping, and shoulder movements. Dabka is not only a form of entertainment, but also a way of expressing cultural identity and solidarity. It has become a symbol of the Middle East's rich, vibrant, and diverse culture. and we're representing Middle Eastern North African Club tonight. So, instead of just performing for you guys tonight, we're actually hoping to get you guys involved. <laughs> so, um, everyone stand up. We're going to teach you some Arab dance moves. <laughs> okay, so the first one is twisting the light bulb. So you just gotta go like this, okay? There you go. <laughs> All right, next we have the uh, one wiper. Okay, next we have the auntie. So it's kind of just like a shoulder shimmer. There you go. <laughs> and then next we have the ammo, which is just a clap. 
our bell. We forgot a really important one. Yeah, the dubke. <laughs> All right, so for the dubke, you guys can't do it because too crowded. But we're going to have you all sit down. We're going to do the dance moves with the music in a bit, but let me show you how to do the dubke. All right, so we're gonna try with the music in your seats. Same, same moves. So can we cue the music, please? Be 
taking a 10 minute intermission. Before you go, we would like to announce our student ad, uh, artists, Addison Mexada, Aaron Dalta, Dalton, sorry, <laughs> and myself have art pieces in the back. If you look to the left, all the way in the back, um, and to the right, and um, we have them in, the, uh, in display in the back of the room. And if you missed our art gallery outside, we invite you to check it out. This is a grounding meditation activity designed for everyone to become aware of the intersecting identities in this space. Please open your mind and heart as you are guided through the meditation. We hope you enjoy it. Welcome back from intermission, everyone. To open our minds and hearts, we invite everyone to center themselves through a guided meditation activity. Gently plant your feet to the floor, straighten your backs, close your eyes, take a breath in slowly, deeply, and completely. Hold for a count of three. One, two, three. Release slowly, deeply, and completely. Take another breath, slowly, deeply, and completely. Hold for three. One, two, three. Release, slowly, deeply, and completely. One more time. Breathe in slowly, deeply, and completely. Hold for three. One, two, three, release slowly, deeply, and completely. Maintain that rhythm of three, allowing your body to relax, let all tensions go, opening your mind as your heart, lungs, and muscles lull to your breathing. As we open our minds to the world, we must connect to it like plants in a forest. Breathe in, opening your heart, your mind, your soul to the people around you. Hear their breathing, the rhythm of their body. Though everyone is different, we all come from one and many communities. St. Mary's religion, ethnicity, and many more. All different trees, flowers, and bushes in one forest. Tapping into these connections, imagine yourself walking on a path, blue open sky above, soil beneath your feet, stream trickling in the distance, trees, flowers, vines, and shrubs, all reaching from the ground to the sun. Walking on this path, Focus on the interconnections between all the trees, the flowers, and the people in this space, harnessing our connections of one forest 
through the roots and branches. Making your way to the center of the forest, you find a seedling. Your seedling is a representation of you. Sitting with your seedling, think about who you are, the intersections of your identity, and where you want to go. Nourishing it and watching it grow. plant blooming. Remember these intentions, this moment, this image. Carry your plant with you openly into the world, honoring your past, nurturing your present, and sowing seeds for the future. Standing and walking out of the forest, take each step with purpose. Ten, nine, eight, release all tension with each step. Seven, six, five, filling your body with strength and health. Four, three, two, one, Open your eyes and relax back in your seat, finding yourself returned to St. Mary's. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the show. Hello, lovely people. My name is Vegan Anella Peretti. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a third year. And today I will be reflecting on my experience as an Indian American female in St. Mary's. I was inspired by Hassan Minhaj, an Indian American stand-up comedian who educates about the Indian American experience through comedy. Now, before I begin, I was told that I have to give a warning <laughs> because my speech is quite vulgar and has cuss words, if that was an evidence from my entrance. <laughs> For those of you family-friendly folks, keep, these, keep this in mind and do as you please. <clears throat> I am here tonight because I'm a cocky little bitch. <laughs> you see, a couple months back, I watched Hassan Minhaj's new comedy special, who for those of you who don't know, is an icon in the Indian American community. And I watched this special, and I came to the conclusion that if I did stand-up comedy, I would obliterate this man <laughs> because I'm so much funnier than him. Because if that horse shit he put out got him a Netflix special, 
If I did stand-up comedy, humbly speaking, I'd be pumping them out like Ali Wah. Yeah. If you think about it, Ali Wong and I are very similar. We're both short, funny, have glasses, and hey, with the way our school handles Title IX allegations, I could be pregnant too. Thank you. Okay, please shut up. Anyways, I am here tonight because my cocky self told me that it would be a great idea to perform stand-up comedy about my Indian American experience for the first time in front of 400 fucking people. Which I thought would work out fine with my experience being a self-proclaimed funny person. So all I'm asking for is a pity laugh or two. If you don't laugh as a brown woman, I will find that both racist and sexist. <laughs> My experience coming to St. Mary's is definitely an interesting one. A fun fact about me that often surprises people is that prior to coming to St. Mary's, it would not be an exaggeration to say that I did not know how to talk to white people. <laughs> Which was an issue because the school has a lot of white people. <laughs> Hi, white people. <laughs> now, before you little woke fucks think that I'm prejudiced, the reason I never talk to white people is not because I hate them. I love white people. <laughs> HGTV, Pottery Barn, Whole Foods, brunch. I eat that shit up. Like a green bean casserole. Now the reason I never talk to white people is because I am from a place with no white people. And no, it's not India, you racist fucks. <laughs> I am from a place called Fremont, California. <laughs> Anyone here heard of Fremont, California? <laughs> well, for those of you who don't know Fremont, Fremont is the brown people mecca. Every Indian person and their mother either lives in Fremont or knows someone in Fremont. To put things in context, Fremont is so brown that in my high school, the popular kids were AP students. <laughs> On our school's Bollywood dance team, and you would get bullied for not being Indian enough. So while y'all were getting bullied by chads, <laughs> in my formative years, I got bullied by Indian nerds for being too white. And I was sick of that shit. So at the end of high school, I said, Fuck brown people. I am going to go to a white school and live my goddamn American dream. So it turns out I thought the American dream was in Moraga. So I ended up here. I came to St. Mary's the year of the pandemic. For many, it was a hard year because of COVID. For me, it was a hard year because it was the year I had to figure out how to talk to white people. <laughs> the thing is, since I grew up in Fremont, prior to college, I had very minimal interactions with white people. 
So the majority of what I knew about white people came from the media. And you know what the media tells you about white people? White people are racist. When I came to St. Mary's, I fully expected to get hate crimed. I know that may sound a little bit extreme, but must I remind you, our school's mascot is a white man. And no, I'm not talking about President Plum. <laughs> to protect myself against my potentially racist peers, I had a strategy. Everyone was racist until proven otherwise. <laughs> see, the woke white people were the easy ones to differentiate. I'd see that BLM mask, the tote bag, that dyed hair, and know full well that girl was an ally. <laughs> Shout out to Avery Monson if you're here. I love you. But for most people, Turns out, you can't really tell for sure until you interact with them. There was this one girl, this one white girl, in my hall freshman year who always seemed a little cold to me. So I decided to conduct a little racism test. <laughs> the next time I saw her in the hallway, I looked at her directly in the eyes, put on a beautiful smile. But you gotta admit, I have a cute smile and I warmly greeted her with a hello, like fucking Barney. <laughs> and I kid you not, this bitch looked straight at me and walked right past me. So I did what anyone would do. I closed my door and cried at my first experience with racism. So later I found out this girl was just a bitch to everyone. <laughs> So that, in fact, was not racism. Just your local St. Mary's bitch. <laughs> I think the closest that I've experienced to overt racism was when I hooked up with a guy and afterwards they commented, I bet you would love a bowl of chicken tikka masala. If my vagina was not dr dry before it was then. <laughs> the thing is, chicken tikka masala is not even from India. It's from Britain. So his comment was not even effectively racist. Now, if he had said, I bet you would love a bowl of idli and sambar. Not gonna lie, I would have let this man go for a round two. <laughs> People in the school might not be overtly racist, but they are fucking ignorant. I once wore Indian clothes on Diwali. You know, like that episode of The Office. I swear to God, I would have probably gotten less stares if I walked around campus with just a string to cover my tits. Our school does not know how to react to culture. But they sure know how to post about it on St. Mary's Instagram page. I know I joke about ignorance, but there are consequences to this. I regularly experience microaggressions because people constantly make, make assumptions about me because I'm Indian. And this is incredibly frustrating because I feel like I have to constantly prove my dimensionality as an individual. I feel the need to dress well, put on makeup, do shit like this <laughs> to prove that I am more than just quiet or smart. I'm funny too, bitch. <laughs> If my time at St. Mary's has taught me anything, I learned that white people are just people. 
And all people have their fucking problems. There's brown people problems, white people problems. Life is just about choosing what type of problems you want. When I left Fremont, I chose white people problems. <laughs> and this fascinated my brown friends back home. When I go home, they often ask me, Meghna, what is it like to go to school with white people? And I tell them about, oh, yeah. <laughs> if I were to put it in St. Mary's terms to them, I'm the one who walked away from Oma lives. <laughs> and I'll do it again when I leave here, too. Thank you very much. <laughs> My name is Erin Dalton. I use they, she pronouns. Growing up queer in Idaho, I was faced with a lot of homophobia, ridicule, and bullying. I used to resent myself for being queer, but as I have grown up, I realize that being queer is a blessing. I am writing this letter to my younger self, detailing my life up until this point and all that I have learned along the way. the girl I used to be. You will be born on a sunny day in September, your parents' first child, into a home that will love you, but a world that will punish you. From a very young age, you will live in a state of confusion. At home, you can act like a boy or a girl, neither or both. Your parents have queer friends that you grow up around and come to love as aunts and uncles. Yet, the schools tell you to hush when you mention queerness, speaking about it like it was an infectious disease and we were on the brink of a pandemic. The church will tell you that being queer is a sin punishable by life in hell, burning for eternity. The bullying will start young. You will be called faggot, dyke, predator, pedophile, creep, and whore. Of course, like the stubborn child you are, you will fight back with all your might. You will put up thick steel walls around your heart, push your emotions to the side, become stoic, strong, unmovable. By the time you reach middle school, you will spend hundreds of hours crying in your room, scared to face the truth. That is, until June 2015, when the Supreme Court decided to grant basic human rights to the queer community. When this news reaches you, a fire reignites in your chest. You hope and pray that the change will reach your small rural town. I will tell you now, change does happen, but not fast enough for you. When you reach high school, you decide to come out to your friends. You say, I am bisexual, with confidence on the outside, but on the inside, you don't know if you even like men or just want to be tough and powerful, or if you even like women or just want to be viewed as soft and dainty. Soon, the entire school knows you are not normal. You and the white boy with the curls, two queers versus the Catholic institution of Bishop Kelly High School. You will leave the Catholic faith, breaking your parents' hearts. You can't tell them the real reason why, because doing so would require you to be vulnerable about your sexuality. And in your soul, 
you know that they won't care. That, but the thought of past rejections and bullying from peers, teachers, priests, and friends terrifies you. The bullying picks up again, but this time in much more subtle ways. Your religion professors will ask the class if queer people deserve the right to live, and you will be forced to defend your life to white boys born with gold in their mouths. You will have a professor that explicitly says that all queer and transgender people deserve to be imprisoned in mental institutions for life in front of the entire religion class. And your heart will break. Nothing will be done, of course, because as the principal says, the school is just following the doctrine of the Catholic Church. High school will feel like hell. You will wake up every morning in immense emotional pain, fighting against every urge to end your life. You will put up those tall steel walls, walk through those glass doors, ready to fight for your right to exist. You cannot show an ounce of emotion, because once those white boys with the gold teeth catch a whiff, their sharp eyes turn black they will rip into you. They will beat you down, bruising your soul, pushing you to the edge of extinction. The professors will do nothing but watch gleefully as you are broken over and over and over again. Now, it won't be all bad. You will have some professors that will write, I'm so proud of you at the top of your essays about being queer. You will find a safe group of friends who love and support you. Most importantly, you will become the person that other queer students approach to come out to for the first time. You will carry this position with pride. You will stage a protest for queer student rights at your senior art show, and you will have parents and strangers to you to tell you how glad they are that you said something. The principal will try to intimidate you, but he can't touch you because you are far more powerful than he will ever be. They will take down your signs and you will print them and put them back up. They will take them down again and again. You will reprint them and put them back up. You will push every rule Break every boundary that that school tries to set on you before graduation. Then you leave and enter California. It will break your mind that a Catholic college has a pride club and an intercultural center. You immediately find yourself surrounded by queer people and finally you feel safe. Then one day, junior year, you walk into the Intercultural Center and attend Queer Thoughts. For the first time in your life, you enter a space that is intentional about building queer community. This will change the course of your life forever. You will start to break down your walls and open your heart to the people around you. You will realize that femininity can be as deep, wide, and strong as the ocean. You will realize that masculinity can be as light, dainty, and soft as cotton blowing in the wind. You will realize that you feel most comfortable dancing in the space between man and woman, being neither and both at the same time. You will realize that you just love people. You will realize you no longer want to be seen as normal. You want to be seen for who you are, queer. You will find strength and resilience in your queerness because after thousands of years of discrimination and genocide, we are still here. Now, St. Mary's isn't perfect. You will still interact with white boys with gold teeth saying faggot as easily as they breathe. And again, they will face no consequences. 
you will find yourself the butt of a bit too many gay jokes made by some straight friends. But at the end of the day, you will refuse to allow it in your life longer than absolutely necessary. Second by second, you will heal yourself of the homophobic traumas inflicted upon you in your childhood. And yes, you will come out to your parents, and yes, they still love you the same. You will not return to the church, but that's okay, because you will find faith elsewhere. You will watch the homophobic hatred in your country lessen and then start right back up again. But this time, you know that it is your life purpose to help kids like you. You'll be scared, but you'll be ready to fight not only for your life, but for the lives of all other queer kids. You don't know how effective you will be, but if you can save just one, that will be enough. I wear my queerness as a badge of honor. I fucking love being queer. I am resilient because I am queer. I have a future because I am queer. So to my dearest self, I will give you this quote by Ocean Vung. Being queer saved my life. Often we see queerness as deprivation. But when I look at my life, I saw that queerness demanded an alternative innovation from me. I had to make alternative routes. It made me curious. It made me ask, is this enough for me? And yes, my dear, you will make it enough for you. With all the love, your future self. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jess Pham. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm currently a fourth year. This piano piece was the first piece in which I had self-learned and played with my grandmother. When she passed, the song reflects growth, changes, and memories of her presence in my life. The piece follows a hopeful melody grounded by the refrain that repeats, and it paints the cultural identity I've held close through my grandmother's nurturing warmth.
My name is Tatiana Cordova, she, her, hers, and I'm the co-president of Ballet Fucorico Guadalupano. BFG takes pride in promoting Latina heritage and community here at St. Mary's. In our practices, we come together to share the experience of being Latina at St. Mary's. Our second set represents the state of Guerrero in Mexico, which consists of African heritage mixed with Spanish influences. This will include the dancers of the previous set of Yucatan. Cuatro chinos en la frente Hay 
Hi, I'm Tyra Thompson. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm a graduating senior. My set is a continuation from the Bash Cultural Night, where I wrote a letter to my younger self, honoring her repressed queer identity and expressing my gratitude for her authenticity. Tonight, I will be sharing a letter I wrote to my future self in hopes that I will always cherish these past four years of identity work and growth. <laughs> to my future self, I hope you are reading this letter with a warm smile and wishing you could tell me now all that will be. The people I'll meet, the sights I'll see, the adventures I'll go on, the ones I'll love, and all the ups and downs to come. I hope you're reading this happy with the place you've found in the world. I also truly hope the time spent in college served as a beautifully complicated foundation for you to live your most free and authentic life as a queer, mixed-race woman. Knowing us and the shitty memory that we have, chances are likely that the moments I find so vivid now may become blurry or even worse, lost. So I write this as a reminder of the defining moments of growth you should be proud of from these past four years of change. Do you remember your first year? You were constantly clueless, trying to figure out what college is, and completely frightened of where you would end up. I'm sure you also remember the uneasy feelings that rushed to your head when asked to reflect on your identities, many of which were hidden, untouched, and unsure. But those uncomfortable emotions soon turned into a curiosity, one that led you to spaces and people that would challenge you to embrace each identity that creates the whole you. These were the years of growth, the years of stepping into your power, the years of accepting queer. You, by fate, found the Intercultural Center. You finally found a home on campus, a space to be brave, a space to be open. You fearlessly facilitated Queer Thoughts Collective Hour, where you built a community. You created a space, not only for yourself, but for your people. The conversations during these hours brought you many laughs, connections, and even tears. You openly shared your queer experiences and encouraged others to do the same. You poured your time, energy, and love into this space. You created change that will continue long into the future. Joining the Bash Cultural Night last year on the exec team was a fun surprise. As set director, you daringly led yourself and others in a campus-wide event all about being queer. Most impressively, you stood up in front of a room full of people and shared your story of discovery and reclamation, sort of exactly like what you're doing right now. For your final, your final senior capstone, you researched the queer climate of St. Mary's. With an intersectional lens and queer theory approach, you held a focus group that named comfortability, inclusion, and safety of the queer community at St. Mary's. 130 pages later, you made your stance and did so by giving a platform to queer voices. You oftentimes found yourself speaking up against homophobia, bias, and microaggressions, even at the cost of being that person. You challenged your friends, and you cried many times when your voice felt unheard or misunderstood but you soon learned that the pain had a purpose and you would do it again over and over because the fight is worth the freedom. These are all but a few glimpses into your past. Glimpses of hope and glimpses of change. My hope is that these glimpses have guided you to the life you've daydreamed of countless times. I wish you slow mornings, dancing in the kitchen, while your partner pours a cup of hazelnut decaf coffee. I wish you warm afternoons spent on a blanket in tall grass with a book and a sky full of clouds to watch. I wish you quiet nights filled with rest and a peace of mind knowing that you lived a day as your most authentic self. 
I find it only fitting to leave you with a quote from the one and only Bell Hooks. Queer is not about who you're having sex with. That can be a dimension of it, but queer as being about the self that is at odds with everything around it and has to invent and create and find a place to speak and to thrive and to live. So please, Tyra, be queer, be yourself, be alive, and be free. All my love, Tyra Thompson, class of 2023. So now I'm free. My name is Cameron Lee, I'm a third year, and my pronouns are he, him, his. Permission to Dance is a K-pop song performed by the South Korean group known as BTS. They stand for self-love and advocate for self-expression. In a time where there were restrictions on dance, they released this song to motivate their fans to keep expressing themselves no matter what the limitations the world puts on them. We chose this K-pop song to not only highlight the growing presence of Asian pop culture representation in global media, but also because of what this group exemplifies. Although they are just a music group from Korea, they have the ability to touch the hearts of millions throughout the world. This act will be performed by Jacob Smith, Kiana Kwong, Sammy Kennedy, Liam McCuller, Anya Tang, Yanai Tran, Jeremiah Mateo, Brian Lee, and Ryan Kwok. It's the thought of being young When your house tastes like a drum Beating louder with no way to guard it When it all seems like swamp Sing it loud and do out and join Into that feeling which is getting started When the nights get cold And the rhythm's got you falling behind Just dream about that moment When you look yourself right in the eye did you say I wanna dance with you?
I'm Aishita Valuru. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Last year at Asian Cultural Night, I organized a cultural fashion show, and seeing how much both the models and audience enjoyed it warmed my heart. For this year's cultural show, I recreated the fashion show, this time including many more cultures. Tonight, you'll get to see how creatively the models express their identities through attire.
All right. Thank you all. Um, this has been a year of really hard work, but we kind of have done it alone. We want to first thank our amazing tech crew, Leah, Richard, and AJ. <laughs> we also want to thank our stage crew, Bianca, Melanie, and Nyambi. This show would not be possible without you. We want to thank the cast for being the backbone of our show tonight. We also want to thank the families and friends who also came out tonight too. And a huge thank you to Legacy Lee. Kimia Shokri. Yeah. <laughs> and the rest of the IC student staff. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all were the foundation of this event. We want to thank our food truck businesses and vendors who fed our families, cast, and crew. A huge thank you to Taste of the World and Frosted by Kiana. Thank you to our vendors with Matcha Love, Crafts by Gib, Albo African Gift Shop, and our henna artists Arati and Nidhi. We would also like to thank Pope and the African Brothers Band for, for performing the beautiful live music. And thank you to our videographer, Rap Productions. Thank you to our florist, Heather, from Flower Bowl Florist. Thank you to St. Mary's Public Safety, The Good Eating Company, The Print Shop for the Posters, and Half Sheets used for advertising. <laughs> Thank you to Bianca Rubio Garcia. <laughs> and Kisa Knight. for publicity and advertising. Our final thank you to Associated Students for funding the show. Now, can we please have all of the seniors come down to the floor? We'd like to commemorate your last year at St. Mary's by giving you the traditional gift of a rose for all of your accomplishments. A round of applause for the seniors. We have a surprise. Exec team didn't know about this. Can I have the exec team please come up front? Come on, exec team. 
So we started talking about this event in October. They've been meeting every week since then. They've been putting hours of work in and working with these amazing people. They had a vision. It came to life. Thank you so much for coming to support it. I want to give another round of applause for the exec team. Wait, can I see the script really quick? <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. We will now be taking a group photo, so if everyone can please go back to your places. And please let our professional videographer take the photographs first, and then y'all are invited to come up and take photos as well. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Have a great rest of your night. me.